Good morning and welcome to another edition of Angry Taxpayer. I'm your host, Donna Smyrnitopoulos. Today is Wednesday, October the 9th. And today I would like to talk about censorship and specifically the role that local media plays in local politics and local government. What the blog doesn't want you to see because it might hurt Harry. Embedded into the next three slides is the content of the op-ed that Nancy Chapman refused to run and that Nancy and probably Harry didn't want you to see. It is the parable of the frog and the scorpion as told through the eyes of real estate owner Jason Milligan in the context of Wall Street Place and the entire Wall Street area and the failure of the city to adequately revitalize the Wall Street neighborhood. The op-ed characterizes law department missteps, bias against small developers and small business owners, favoritism towards big democratic donors who are also developers, people like John McClutchy, who in May of 2019 donated another $10,000 to the Democratic State Central Committee. I actually asked the treasurer of that committee, our own District A councilperson, Eloisa Melendez, about donations from McClutchy, and she refused to comment. This is a story of the squandering of taxpayer resources in the name of frivolous lawsuits. This is a story of saving a big bank, Citibank, at the expense of the city. This is a story of consistent failures at City Hall to jumpstart Wall Street. Uh, Mayor Reeling campaigned in 2014 in front of the what was to be Wall Street Place Phase 1. It's still wrapped in Tyvek. Nothing is happening. And in his most recent op-ed that ran intact in Nancy on Norwalk, Mayor Reeling is still blaming the flood of 1955 for what's not happening on Wall Street. And finally, there's been a failure to hold the redevelopment agency accountable. The redevelopment agency has had their fingers in a lot of different pies in the city, and Wall Street Place is one of those. They receive funding from Housing and Urban Development, they receive funding from the state, they receive funding from the city, they are accountable to no one. There's an old saying, when you're a hammer, all you see are nails. When you're a scorpion, all you see are opportunities to sting because it's in your nature. And when you're a lawyer, all you see are opportunities to rack up legal fees or file suit, regardless of who benefits and who loses. The scorpion in this tale is Corporation Counsel, Corporation Counsel Mario Coppola, who in spite of good faith efforts on the part of Jason Milligan and high-ranking officials at City Hall to move forward in a positive manner for the benefit of the entire city in order to revitalize the Wall Street area, nevertheless refused the offer to mediate the lawsuit that the city and the agency filed against Jason Milligan in June of 2018. So instead of retreating, and behaving in a conciliatory manner in the spirit of those dialogues that were happening at City Hall in order to advance the interests of the entire city, the city that employs him, Corporation Council instead acted in his nature. He stung, he bit. As a result of the nature of the scorpion, we all suffer. So just like in the parable, the frog and the scorpion both die. Are we all going to suffer the same terrible fate because of the nature of one individual at City Hall? That's the question of this opinion piece, and, and that's the question that Nancy Chapman and possibly Harry Rilling, who employs Corporation Counsel, did not want you to answer. Who loses when Corporation Counsel gets his way? We all do. We all lose. If we could have cleared some of the cobwebs created by the lawyers, we might already have a thriving and bustling Wall Street without a lot of unnecessary interference from the government. That's not what we're getting. Uh, I will post a link to the op-ed that appeared in yesterday's hour 
if you would care to read it. It's also here. You can always pause the, the uh, slideshow and read it for yourself, but I'm happy to send you over to the Hours website to read it there. In May of this year, Nancy Chapman received the First Amendment Award from the Connecticut Society of Professional Journalists. There's nothing quite right about this. If you look into the history of why she was identified to receive this award, she published an article about Mark D'Amelio. She used sealed court documents that had been anonymously delivered to her. She did not question who might have sent those documents or why they might benefit from publication of this story. Mr. D'Amelio subsequently sued her for false light claims. And uh, I've read the article. Nancy Chapman went out of her way to look up the police records of Mr. D'Amelio's passengers. She did not distinguish in the article between <clears throat> their, their police records before they were given a ride to the train station and after. So she definitely went out of her way to create a false light. There is quite a bit of evidence pointing to Doug Stern as the likely culprit in releasing those documents. Who benefited from this? Bob Duff benefited because Mark D'Amelio was Bob Duff's opponent. Doug Stern also benefited. The previous nominee for judge of promate from the Democratic Party was Darnell Crossland. He intended to run again. That nomination was taken away from him by supporters of Doug Stern. And, and remember, Doug Stern, and he may be a very nice guy, but he went through the Democratic Party that kind of the same way that Colin Hostin is going through there now, nice people willing to play the game in order to get ahead. I think Eloisa Melendez is probably in the same category. So Nancy Chapman getting an award for helping these people, I can't think of anything worse for free speech than this particular photo. Now here's where our story about bias in the media gets really interesting. Bob Welsh is the former chairman of the board of Chapman Hyperlocal Media. He also served as an editor. He moderated comments. He contributed content and he was, as previously noted, a generous financial supporter, giving $5,000 in 2017 and committing to another $5,000 in 2018. In addition to these other duties, Bob Welsh was responsible for selling political ads and it was in fact Bob Welsh who approached Mark D'Amelio to sell him political ads in the fall of 2018. So our story about local media would not be complete without mentioning that Robert Koch, formerly of the Norwalk Hour, resigned several months ago, allegedly subsequent to an editorial written by new, newly hired editor Matt DiRienzo in support of Nancy Chapman, who was at that time facing a lawsuit filed by Mark D'Amelio claiming false light. Clearly, Robert Koch did not like that his own editor was supporting the competition. There may be more to it than that. I know from my own experiences with local reporters and those familiar with Nancy Chapman from previous gigs that she has a well-earned reputation. Take that as you will. Both Nancy Chapman and Bob Welsh were contacted regarding this video. Both refused to comment. I have attached a link to Scorporation Council by Jason Milligan, or you can choose to read the op-ed using the slides that I provided for you. I hope that you have a better understanding now of the role that local media plays in government oversight. They do have a role to play. We should have a system of checks and balances, not only within government, but the fourth estate, which is the press, also has a role to play. In my opinion, they're not playing it. In fact, they're doing the opposite. They are advancing the agenda of local government. Perhaps Nancy Chapman is worried about using her workforce housing that she enjoys at the Waypoint. Perhaps there are other reasons. Uh, perhaps there is some resentment and animus towards certain people uh, who you know, did not live up to her expectations. They weren't bankrolling her operation the way that she expected them to. I perceive a lack of professionalism, a lack of integrity. 
I perceive bias. It is evident in the way comments are moderated, in the way certain people are banned. And the only way to make this stop is for you to demand that it stop. And the best way to demand that it stop is to show your disapproval at the voting booth on November the 5th. The surest way to put a stop to bias in the media is to cut off the legs of the people who are benefiting from bias in the media. Right now, those people work at City Hall and they have been elected by us to serve us at City Hall. So when the local media is working in collusion with elected officials, we are the losers. But as in the case of the frog and the scorpion, we all lose. Everybody goes down. There are no winners in this story. So I, I beg of you, pay attention to what's going on. Look at local media with an objective eye. Demand something better and show your disapproval when you vote on November the 5th. I hope you have a wonderful day. I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Please uh, hit like, leave your comments, write to me at save Norwalk now at gmail.com and please subscribe to my channel.